Hey guys, what's up? Hey, what's up? I'm so sorry about that ghetto college problems. The internet just completely shut out for a whole like five minutes. But uh, if you guys wouldn't mind if we could start the interview over from yeah. the beginning again for recording reasons. Yeah, it's fine. We yeah. were very far in, so that worked. Yeah. That's sweet. Awesome. So if, if you guys wouldn't mind telling our audience again how you guys met. Yeah. These guys, uh, should I even say this? Because yeah. I'm not even... I'm, That's fine. Uh, That's fine. Right. Tell it as it is. Uh, I'm doing it. All right. So these guys have been playing for like eight years together. Uh, Nate's been writing songs, I think, like before that. Pretty much his whole life. Since like a baby, he came out like right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then they like brought up the Provo and found the rest of us. We've just been playing songs together. That's sweet. I, I noticed on your guys' band's bio on the internet um, that you guys all went on missionary trips to the Philippines. Did that play a component in, how, in your music and how you guys met? Yeah, so uh, all of us, every member of the band actually did serve uh, LDS missions. Um, me and Connor actually went to the Philippines. I went to Germany, he was in Switzerland. That's awesome. That is pretty cool. I have a friend right now who's on a missionary trip in Taiwan. So it's pretty cool. It's spreading, yeah. the, spreading the good word and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like, missions are, are not um, they like, I mean, they teach you to work hard, teach you how to like stick something through two years. You really got to stick something through, even, even with like little or no success, you know, you have to like stick it through and work hard. And, um, of course, like it helped build our faith in God and everything, but it, but it also like, um, just made us like more solid, dependable. And also, it's real important in a band. To have a companion uh, on your mission, right? Like, they're assigned to you. And uh, so you have to, like, you have yeah. to learn along with people. So then it, then it becomes a lot easier when you, like, choose your bandmates. You know? Um, yeah. You learn a lot of people. I hear you. Well... One thing that really stands out to us about your band is um, your ability to have really good band chemistry while on stage. Uh, how'd you guys develop that? I'm, I'm gonna speak for Nate here, but um, me and him met when he was barely starting to listen to kind of a lot of more bluegrass, you know? Yeah. So, listen to more like Led Zeppelin, kind of hard rock kind of stuff, and I feel like that played a pretty big component in it because, um, I don't know, we kind of, we kind of love the energy. Mm -hmm. Up tempo. Uh, yeah. When we play live, we kind of like to rock out a little more, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, what was it that got you guys into folk music? It's sort of a less common genre. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's just, I was, I was really into, like, uh, ACDC and Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath when I was in middle school and my mom had had it, right? So, <laughs> to try to get me like softer stuff. Um, I mean, just for their bit of it, I'm sure. And uh, my dad had gone to a record store and he brought me back a few Bob Dylan CDs. Um, and I was turned on to them immediately because it was something I could play. I wasn't a very good guitarist at the time. Mm. I still, um, but like, but Bob did uh, Neil Young stuff. It's just chords and work. Um, so I really like how accessible it was. Mm. And then from there, I just, you know, went on to more and more folk, folk singer. One thing for me is like, that really drew me to folk music is like you don't have to pretend to be somebody, right? Yeah. I kind of thought for a while, be like Kurt Cobain or Jimi Hendrix or um, I don't know. You just need to have this like crazy uh, personality, but folk music it just has this like honest, genuine nature about it mm -hmm. that we all find appealing. 
um, yourself, you know. And um, that can definitely, I, I noticed that when I was listening to uh, As My Brother, it was a little bit, uh, it was a little bit more, not as up tempo as other songs, but it was like it was, it was more genuine. You could really feel the, the passion behind it. What, what, like for instance, like that song right there. What, what was the inspiration for a song like that? Oh, first of all, thank you. That's that's so awesome that you, uh, you like that. But um, that song just kind of wrote itself. Um, I was gonna, I was planning to move to North Carolina. I never did. Actually, we, I did my mission service instead, but I mean, a lot of the songs and that, that one especially, it, it's not like, it's not like I sit down to write a song or anything. Um, it just, uh, you know, the song's there when I go over the guitar, or it's not. Mm. And in that case, it was there. Never... I never take all that long to write a song. Mm. No. If I do, then I usually end up scrapping it because it's not good. Yeah. When you guys write your songs, is it usually a collaborative process or does one of you guys tend to take the lead in the songwriting process? It can be. Like, uh, uh, Nate writes a lot of the songs. Um, but what we'll couple on the CD uh, that either we help with music on or help with words on certain parts um, or yeah some of us will, will add a song or two into the mix yeah I got you yeah Nate um, yeah he, he really likes just the simple kind of chords and words you know it's really lyricist and stuff, and so he really brings a, a kind of like this raw version of the song, mm. and so kind of like format as a man, and so it works really well. Like, kind of each have a role in the songwriting. Yeah. Yeah, it works pretty well. Really hate details. <laughs> um, I just like big picture stuff, so, you know, I love big guys because I can this you know, kind of vague chords and they can, they can flush out the and I don't give a crap if they do what it is. That's cool. When, when you guys were live and I saw you down in Charleston, like yeah, you guys have a lot of cool like jam band sections to your songs. Is that like mapped out or is it just like let it happen, free flow and kind of stuff? It's, it's more mapped out on my end. I uh, kind of like play a lot of different instruments but none of them like super well you know yeah so i have to write my part and i, I could jam out a little bit but mostly i stick to it because mm. live i kind of i i kind of get a little nervous when i'm nervous i can't really like branch out and do crazy stuff you know mm. so you, you never know you guys were nervous you have such strong stage presence <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw in one of your YouTube videos, like, you guys are getting so into it, I could see the stage going, like, I was like, oh, man, I think it might come down. <laughs> a lot of places, they're like, oh, they're a full stage. And we're just destroying the yeah. stage. Mm -hmm. so. In uh, Murfreesboro, Scott, the drummer, was, uh, he was kind of backed out in the corner. He had, like, two inches between him and, like, a five-foot drop. And then we just <laughs> stage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm parts. I'm the once again, I don't do details. Mm -hmm. Those harmonica parts I, I make up. So there are like small that are that are like made up every, but our part we stick to the same like structure. Mm, that's cool. So um. You guys are like sort of torn around a little bit right now. Like, what's like a really cool experience you guys have had like with your music being on the road? Well, this is what <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Left someplace and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so they like didn't it. just forget about us the next day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a girl grab my butt the other day. Uh, uh, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> stage in Asheville right after
gave me way to like like a full body hug and I'm married mm-hmm. so I was like Alex gives great hugs like <laughs> like 30 seconds into the hug she gave me I'm like you know like this guy gives good hugs too <laughs> it's like like you know right on the behind um, <laughs> it was in like this, this like full like butt scoop <laughs> It's funny. <laughs> funny, kind of just wrapping up cables, and I look over and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Might need to send some help over there, man. <laughs> you guys reached rock star status there. <laughs> I don't know if that's the type of experience you're looking for, but uh, <laughs> other than that, like, it's just the cool. Uh, I think, like Ben was starting to say, uh, we we like go to these shows. And we don't make connections with like huge groups. Well, I guess like Georgia, we were at this festival and that was like awesome. Like everyone was the party. But a lot of the other shows, it's just, it's just like a few people. Like we'll get done with the show, we'll go out and talk to people, and there'll be like, like two or three people at each show. We somehow connected with through our music mm. that's been like huge that's been yeah. awesome like yeah. that makes every show work it's just yeah. like be with the people afterwards that um, that felt peak because of it that felt uh, just felt good being there mm-hmm. it's beautiful definitely yeah. like it really is like like music is this grand scale thing where you put it on a CD and, and you can distribute it to everybody. But what really makes us excited is musicians, like the individual, the individual like connection. You know, like everybody can relate to a certain song, um, and it, they'll relate to it differently. They'll interpret it differently. But we love that's that's the thing that really like gets us excited. Is, is the, People's like personal experience mm, connection. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. So, um, are you guys working on any new music to put out, or is it strictly tour right now? Yeah, uh, I mean, we're trying to keep up with Nate. He he just kind of pumped out songs, you know. Mm. And so, kind of, kind of hold him back a little bit, but he's, <laughs> he, he's a he's a wild uh, song creator, I guess. Yeah, we started playing two new songs with this tour, actually. I got you. Yeah, right? Yeah. And we, we did some riding and we did camping in Smoky Mountain National Park. We did some riding there. I mean, it's just like the the process is just an upward spiral. I mean, getting out and playing shows just makes me want to get out and play more. And then we all just want to write more. And, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it just keeps going. I mean, it, we finished our CD, like, we released it August 6th, and, you know, we, I guess we finished it, like, a week or two before that, and already, it's, like, I mean, we're not, we haven't made any song plans at all, but, like, talking about the music, it's already come up in, like, you know, discussions, man. Yeah. That's sweet, that, when you get that new CD out, you gotta come back to Charleston and visit us. Oh, definitely. Those guys at the brewing company said we can come back anytime. They were super nice guys. Mm. Yeah. I-, I love seeing shows there because it's just so intimate. What was that? I said I, I love seeing shows at that place because it's so intimate, you know? You're just you and the band. That's it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, cool place. Yeah. For sure. Well, we, we thank you guys for uh, setting aside some time to talk with us. and. We hope that the rest of your tour goes great. Mm. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for chatting with us. Oh yeah, for sure. And also, thanks for getting up at seven thirty in the morning. <laughs> it's uh, that's awesome. <laughs> I know as a college kids, we usually don't roll out until five minutes before class, so <laughs> it's much appreciated. <laughs> well, thanks. All right. See you guys. Uh-huh.